most memorable Stranglers moments, one good and one bad? Well, I mean, the, a good bad one was the, the fact that um, it really happened on the same time, which was um, which was when we did the uh, show in Nice uh, where the riot happened because... Mm -hmm. um, the good thing about it was um it was the best we i'd ever heard us play we were just absolutely in stunning form and it was i i was amazed at how good we we played we were just mm. on top of our game so that that was i always remember that feeling how great you know i was really proud of how good we were but then the same night uh there was the riot and we had a most terrible moment afterwards of being locked up in nice jail and you know cockroaches climbing all over us from the, the 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 latrine in the middle of the cell and oh it's horrible it's a horrible experience and then uh and what brought on the riot um they the um the uh, university authorities we'd already had a show cancelled in Cannes. we were going to play a club in Cannes, but it mm -hmm. was cancelled um so niche university at the last minute said you can come and play it out uh, university but little did we know that there was a running uh, political situation going on between the students and the authorities at Nice University mm. and it was like a, kind a, a tinder box ready for a spark to get to set off a confrontation between them and we turned up with this uh, generator that uh, to run all the equipment and everything and uh, they refused to let it let us use our generator said no you you have to use our generator and our tech people said uh, well there's not enough power on you that you're not providing enough power to run the lights and the equipment it's not enough and they said we don't care we don't want your your generator and we said why and they said it will melt the concrete i don't know how wow. melt concrete i mean anyway they didn't want us to use their generator so we didn't use the generator and sure enough the when the equipment and the lights were on after about two three minutes the lights went uh, the equipment went down so we had to keep stopping mm. and so the set started we did two numbers and stopped again came on did another two numbers stopped and this happened like four or five times and it got wow. to a point where it was uh, it was just c counterproductive and well, the yeah. audience was getting more and more angry and oh and you guys were getting frustrated and too, we were getting sure. frustrated uh, it was in one of these points when we were playing that i th had this great moment where i thought we were fabulous fabulous mm. great band and i was very proud almost had tears in my eyes and then of joy and then and then uh, we we decided to curtail the concert and and um, unwittingly and against my better judgment I allowed John to go out and speak to the crowd because he said oh let me go out and say something because I can speak to them in French and I knew Did you that speak I was French? a little bit but I would have I would have explained it in English and but I knew my, against my better judgment I shouldn't have let him go out because he he basically um, inspired them to uh, go crazy, yeah, uh, with what he said. So it was pretty uh, evident that after he said something, that things something, started. Yeah, but also not only that, the authorities switched all the lights off. Oh, great! In the gig. <laughs> I mean, if anything, if going to create an anarchic situation, yeah, yeah, madness. So we went off to. Um, you know, we went off uh, various places. Day, I remember Dave and I went off to have a seafood supper um, at some some big fan's house, and um, and we got back about seven in the morning from this dinner, and we were promptly arrested when we walked into our hotel. Oh! <laughs> and the others were Hope already in jail. Your dinner was good. <laughs> it was oh, very really? good. It's very good. Shellfish and stuff. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, that's that's so that was the worst and bad mo. Best and worst moment, best and at worst moment, at the same time, happening simultaneously, which is what happens in life a lot, actually. Yeah. And when uh, when you said that that there was like the political situation, yeah. How soon were you aware of that? Uh, when our um, when our management got involved and they came, they didn't even know this, so they they weren't around and they flew down from England. They made some inquiries and then they discovered that all this had been going on. Oh right! Unbeknownst. So it to was us. sort of it was really waiting to happen. You exactly. just happened to we be. We were the, we were the the, the spark. Lucky the you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, wow. So that does that answer? I guess that answers. Of course that. it does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So we have a question about the um, the Finchley boys. I think it would probably be best if you just wanted to sort of recollect a little bit about the early scene and about the Finchley boys and Dog and Dave and. Maybe well, help. yeah, well, the uh, Finnish boys was 
a different entity to Dagenham oh, Dive. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 totally separate things. And um, well, we were playing at a place in North London early days. I think it was called the Torrington. Uh, we were playing away as a Sunday. I remember as a Sunday night, and s- we noticed a large group of youths in the audience who mm. who weren't misbehaving or anything, but they looked quite menacing. But they mm. weren't misbehaving at all. And then they all disappeared, and I thought they'd gone. And then towards the end of the set, they all jumped on the stage, and they'd been in the uh, in the the bathrooms, restrooms, and changed into their punk clobber and their punk clothes, oh. and they jumped on stage, and and I thought we were dead. But in <laughs> fact, they were. They just wanted to be friends, you know, and just mm-hmm. dance on stage and, and pogo interact. and all this interact. And it was the Finchley boys. And uh, the reason they'd gone into the bathroom is because if they'd have walked in in their stuff, they wouldn't have been allowed in, you see. Okay. So they smuggled it all in and then very clever. And then they changed into it all in the restrooms and came out and joined us on stage. And uh, they were very, very friendly and nice bunch of kids. And um, and they started coming to all our shows. Um, and then they were hiring. Then we played in Scotland and they hired a van and, you know, a big big empty van and they all got in the back with their sleeping bags and they drive up to wow. Scotland and sleep in the in their bus and then drive back again and they became quite sort of um famous really yeah. the Finchley boys and they were they were all from Finchley and they were they were great fun lo- lo- lovely bunch of boys um not troublemakers at all and that that's it that's the where they came from mm-hmm. yeah and uh, and there was a unfortunately there was a big run in between them and this uh, big fan of ours called Dagenham Dave who was a um, uh, who used to work in the Ford factory in Dagenham mm. making cars and he was a very active he was he was built like a uh, brick do it house <laughs> um, and he was like a big bulldog like a big ox uh, but very 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 strong Dave mm-hmm. and uh, he was a, our biggest fan. And he was such a fan of ours that he even offered us his wife. <laughs> well. He said, I am such a fan of you guys that if you want to sleep with my wife, I'm quite happy. If she wants to and you want to, that's absolutely fine. D- do you know if she knew that that offer was on the yes, table? Yes, she did. She did? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what a fan. <laughs> what an accommodating <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't think anyone took it. It was just remarkable. What a, you know, a selfless thing to... Yeah. Not, but, you know, she was totally aware of it. So anyway, but so that's how big a fan he was, basically. And then the Finchley boys came in and became our fans, and then he got sort of jealous. Oh, like he was the number one fan. Yeah, or and suddenly he was being shared. Oh. You know, he didn't like it. So, so he got very drunk one night when we were playing at the place called the Hundred Club in mm. Oxford Street in London on special brews. This beer, which is very very strong, it's like ten percent very very strong beer anyway he used to drink those like they were water and he got absolutely tanked up and while we were playing the show he started attacking the Finchley boys Mm. so they had to they defended themselves and they put him in hospital and it was an awful evening I mean it was it wasn't very pleasant at all Um, well and especially you being on stage just watching it sort of unfold and the thing is at that moment our manager walked in with Malcolm McLaren because <laughs> Malcolm wanted us to go on the tour, anarchy tour with the, the pistols. Oh, really? And then he saw all this and said, "Sorry, <laughs> no, <laughs> no." Uh, so that that so that was a bit of funny timing. When that was happening, I mean, what was going through your mind? Were oh, you trying to play like a softer song to calm things? No, I mean, no, what, we, know, did what what we, we did what we did. We did what we did. We were on. We were in set mode. You know, we yeah. doing the same set every night. So switch on, play. Right. It was just you just felt helpless. It was very sad, and mm. uh, he he went to hospital and and recovered. Spent a long time recovering, and then he got very depressed and he committed suicide. Yeah, and and that's the song song Dagenham Day. But it's it's connected with. I mean, they were so they were visiting him in hospital and stuff. Oh, going, they were. Yeah, saying what? Oh why you're God. mad? Why did you? Yeah, you know you're mad. Why why pick on us? You know what? Did we we hadn't done anything. That that was the sad thing about it. Yeah, it was, he brought it all. He just decided. Well, I'm I don't sure know a lot of that was the liquor talking. And too. I don't know what other things were happening in his life as well. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you never do yeah. know.